but still get to eat what you want. What would I suggest? I would suggest you take a look at your calendars and time it so that you are, what is today, the, the 17th? Yeah, 17th, when's, when's Thanksgiving? 25th, 25th, that's right, very good. So on the 25th, because from 9 to 10.30, you'll be here, can you work it off, all right? So on the 25th, you've got about 10 days. So if you guys can eat real good between now and then, then have your Thanksgiving dinner. Right now, the key part will be the next morning, when you'll go, yeah, I ate like big five hours, didn't feel bad at all, feel real good. Then you'll wake up the next morning and then grandma will go, oh, hey, there's some leftover pumpkin pie. Do you want it for breakfast? <laughs> and normally they would say yes. Please, thanks, Nana. But I want you to be good about your diet the next day. Because you get the refeed. It's not a seven day refeed, so it's a five hour refeed. Yeah? Which I know is what happens. So, supplementation. Alright, so those of you who have known me for a while know that historically I've been very anti supplements. I've been get it from your food. Get it from your food, and, that, and, and that's what you need. However, this research has swayed me. I also want to point out that I'm not selling you supplements. I'm going to recommend supplements for you that are available at Vitamin Codes, Whole Foods, any place where the supplements are sold. Okay. And having said that, these supplements are all designed not to increase your metabolism, but to stabilize that leptin and insulin. And also, do a few other things that help affect your leptin and insulin. Uh, I'll go through real quick. Chromate is one which basically helps, helps keep that insulin right at the level it should be, helps stabilize it. Uh, slow niacin is a nicotinic acid. Funnily enough, we'll uh, find uh, so sorry, and that right there is actually great for cholesterol reducing and also um, increasing insulin resistance, which means that your body, as soon as insulin is released in the system, it goes, okay, bam, insulin's here, let's drop that blood sugar down. It gets absorbed in the muscles, and everything, everything works really, really finely, finely tuned, if you will. Interestingly, nicotinic acid is also very high in the food Vegemite, which yeah, if ever, any of you have tried, Bob's tried it, I love Vegemite. Good. Anyway, that's right. It's like, Bob has dreams about it. He goes, no, no, please no, why? I thought we were friends like that, right? So, Good stuff. If you guys haven't tried Vegemite, then uh, I recommend you do it, all right? It's, uh, although when you try it, don't slap it down like peanut butter, all right? Because while it may look like something delicious that you can put on in large amounts, it's very highly concentrated stuff. <laughs> if you'll find out, you try that. Uh, all right, polyphenol. For cholesterol lowering, one to two glasses of red or white wine for weight loss. Say what? One to two glasses of red or white wine for weight loss. Daily. What's that? Daily. Now, if you don't drink, or if for some reason you don't want to drink, or you hate wine, then there's the content that's within the wine, <coughs> wine is called Reservatrol. David's happy now. David's like, oh, yeah. This, this, this presentation all of a sudden like, took a nice big job. Like. <laughs> so, Reservatrol is a content within the wine. It's more prevalent within red wine, but recent research has shown that white wine actually has similar effects on the body. In a study that they did on women, uh, for a, it was a long term period, they found that women who actually lost the most weight also drank a glass or two of wine a night. There's a whole bunch of research to back this up. Uh, if, you, if you Google reserve control, you'll see, all, you'll see what it's all about. Now, I'm going to add on to this, and I'm actually going to say, you know what? If you know you're going to have a huge night, I would say to you, and I would say to you with, with the cameras filming, if you know you're going to have... Am I, am I still on? All right, good. Hi, Jamie. You're doing a great job so far. So what I'd say to you is, drink. Go and drink. Don't drink high carb drinks. Drink the most most concentrated stuff you can find. If you're into tequila, then drink the most expensive tequila. Or if you're into scotch, drink the most expensive scotch. Two reasons. One, if it's most expensive, you're probably not going to chug it. Two, if you, if it's if it's a good if it's good tequila or a good, a good scotch, you're probably going to sip it because it will have flavour to it. You will taste it. All right. Things like margaritas would be on the other end of the spectrum, where they are super high sugar. And here's what happens. When you drink alcohol, it's not necessarily bad for you, um, um, apart from the obvious reasons. From a weight loss perspective, it's not necessarily bad for you to drink the alcohol, because what happens is the alcohol actually makes your body more, uh, it basically messes with your insulin. So it's messing with your insulin. So what happens is, I then go and eat something. I go and eat something, 
And because the alcohol is messed with my insulin, I eat it, and the body goes, basically goes, you know what, I'm not quite sure what to do with this. I'm kind of having a party over here. And then the body goes, well, you know what, uh, let's just put it over in the fat stores. And it does it a lot more than it would if my body was in a state where I hadn't been drinking alcohol. So if you are going to go out of the town, know that you can go out of the town, drink dry wines, not sweet wines, have higher concentration of alcohol, like, you know, like 100 proof stuff, if, if you can take it. But drink the goods to buy the good stuff, and drink the good stuff and sip the good stuff. Don't mix it with orange juice or whatever, whatever else that the kids are, the kids are mixing with stuff in nowadays. Crazy kids, crazy kids. So, does that make sense? And that what's happening is not necessarily the alcohol that makes you overweight. It's the things you would eat with the alcohol that basically the body goes, I'm not quite sure what to do with this. Bam, goes to the fat stores. So I would say if you're going to drink wine, have it as a dessert. So you know I'm not going to have wine on a meal, but I'll have it afterwards. Because then you've got this nice layer of protein and fat sitting in your stomach, then you, take, then you drink the wine and it mixes. And it doesn't necessarily go like straight, bam, carb, carbohydrate bond to the stomach and the stomach does all sorts of weird, funny things where it, it messes with the way it's going to process stuff. And then you try to eat food and it can't, it can't get processed the same way. What I'm going to tell you is, after your nice little protein and fat meal, I sit in the stomach and also still digesting and, uh, and sort of like you're being, being attacked by enzymes and all kinds of good stuff, drink your wine then. It'll have much less effect on the body in terms of how the scale looks the next day. Good. Have we got that part? Mm -hmm. I have notes, so I'll give you guys all notes afterwards, alright? But for right now, I haven't given you the notes, because every time I give notes, people just go, What? Sorry? What? Oh, that's really interesting. He's about to say that? Oh, cool. I'll give you that. Alright, so, before bed, here are some you want to take. When you wake up, you'll notice that the glass of wine is before bed, not when you wake up, alright? Keep on, keep on. So, when you wake up, we're going to take some slow niacin again, take some magnesium, Great for blood pressure, great for, great for insulin. Actually, in magnesium as well, uh, for the ladies in the crowd. In terms of cramps at that time of month, they're fantastic for preventing that. Because part of, part of what's happening with magnesium is there's a magnesium protesting relationship. And a lot, a lot of us will go, eat bananas. This is great marketing by the banana guys. If it's a cheetah, the cheetah banana company, does a great job with that because really, there are so many other things that are higher in potassium, like a salad. There's like so much higher in potassium than a banana is. Uh, but, but they say, yeah, you get banana, because that, that'll, that'll increase the potassium. What they don't talk about is really the relationship between the magnesium and the potassium is what's most important in terms of the muscles being able to switch on and switch off. So if cramps are an issue, that is something that's great tonight. Magnesium. About a week before, a week before you do for your cycle, then take, take a bunch of magnesium, maybe a double or a triple dose for two, two or three days, see how it affects you. Because I, I haven't had a client yet that said it, it didn't help in some significant way. 1,000 milligrams of cinnamon, I would recommend in the cinnamon capsule form. If you've ever tried eating cinnamon straight out of a spoon, it is a great party trick on people. Just to get because then they cough when they <laughs> Fish oil. Fish oil has got so many great things about it. Fish oil has so many amazing things about it. Vitamin D is low in most people. It's an essential, it's an essential nutrient that we need. Uh, it's also great for stabilizing leptin. I would recommend if you haven't been taking fish oil, take about 150 of the RDA for, uh, for the first, first couple of weeks and then bring it down. Does anyone have a question so far? Questions, questions? What's MSM? What's MSM? Yeah. Is that magnesium and... Do I have that up there? Yeah, no, yeah. no, I don't. I okay. mean, you buy it, you know, it's... Oh, MSM? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking about uh, MSM... Uh, I'm, not sure what, I'm not sure what it says, no, it's not magnesium. Oh. MSM is more for joints. Yeah, there's something that's kind of like, it's in the chondroitin glucosamine sort of region. But what I would say is that uh, um, glucosamine, glucosamine chondroitin, actually if you take that, I would say that a clean diet will do more for reducing joint pain. And actually it's been shown uh, in studies that it won't do much for joint pain if you're in extreme pain. <coughs> if you're in slight pain, there's been studies that have shown it gives you results. However, I would say a clean diet will reduce inflammation through the body and will have a more positive effect on the body than chondroitin. And I would say chondroitin glucosamine is something glucosamine is something you don't want to take as much because it actually interferes with your leptin. Oh, my problem. Uh, there you go, that's it. So, it all makes sense now. Yes? That's so nice. Does that make you have that red rush? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. And some people, they have a reaction to it where they'll feel flushed. Mm -hmm. So I would say if you have that, control the dosage until you don't get that. Mm -hmm. well, 